Hi everyone, I thought you guys would like to say hi to Mac before the live stream starts. He's sitting right here next to me and hopefully he won't uh, go inside during the live stream, but my son's inside packing your orders from the weekend. I told him if Mac goes to the door, it's hot out here, so just let him in. So hopefully you guys are having a great start to your week. We're expecting a heat wave here. I think Thursday it's supposed to get to the triple digits. So shade cloth is gonna be going up this week. So let me know here in the chat if you're experiencing hot weather and if you're gonna be putting shade cloth up in your garden. So I wanna welcome you today to our live stream. We're gonna be talking about how to grow basil, three tips to grow an endless supply. And I don't know about you guys, but basil is one of my very favorite herbs. You can see I'm growing quite a bit of it behind me here. And there's so many different kinds and varieties. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. Um, and then how you can grow an endless supply because we never seem to have quite enough. I think it's one of those herbs that you can never grow too much of and it's very easy to uh, preserve as well. So welcome. Thanks, thanks to all of you who joined me in the chat at 1145. Um, we are here every single Monday at noon Pacific time and the moderators are usually in the chat by 1130. I'm usually in the chat by 1145 and a lot of you come back week after week. And welcome to all you first timers out there. Um, let me just say, say hello to some of the people here in the chat. Jack watching from Maryland, heat wave in Maryland, shade cloth is up, oh, yeah. Good thing, Jack. I know it's been super hot there. Marie, heat wave here too. You guys are getting a lot of really hot weather up there in Canada. And Rod, watching from Baja. Hello, Rod, how are you doing? Um, Nisha and Cliff are our moderators, moderators today, so thank you so much. Patrick O'Brien, I don't know if camera guy will be able to join us today or not. He may pop in. Uh, I know you guys always enjoy, enjoy seeing him and uh, he loves to see you guys too. Melanie Brown is watching, Tam Wilson, um, Andrew Harris from France, that's exciting. And let's see, W. Wu, how are you? My Backyard Gourds. Um, Sandy Devon, great to have you. Yusevi, Tania, uh, there was uh, someone watching from the UK. So welcome to all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you had a great weekend in your garden. And what we're gonna do is talk about a basil tip and then I'll jump back in the chat and answer some questions. Um, so get your basil questions ready, all right, you guys? Okay, so um, a couple of basics about basil. In case you guys are brand new to growing basil, I know we do have a lot of new gardeners um, watching us lately and it's so exciting to grow your own herbs and flavor your food it's just so delicious and they're so easy to grow and basil is definitely one of the easiest herbs to grow it's a warm weather herb it likes temperatures of between 50 degrees and 85 degrees and you can plant it from seed directly in your garden beds it's a great container uh, herb as you guys can see I'm growing most of my basil in containers this year because I found that basil really does um, tend to like uh, not super, super hot temperatures. It tends to like a little bit of filtered sun, like you could, if you can place it in the shade or even in just the morning sun. My basil, um, I was leaving it in the sun all day and it was getting a little bit burned up. So I just planted a bunch of containers and moved it on a spot on my deck where it gets about three to four hours of morning sun. It is doing so much better. So um, if any of you have been having trouble growing basil and you have it in full sun and it's over 80 or 85, you might wanna give that a try. So it's a great container friendly basil. There's so many different varieties, you guys. And I have an herb seed collection that has two different varieties of basil. It has a Italian large leaf basil, which is this one right here. Isn't that beautiful? And it also has a purple basil, which, um, where's my purple basil? I love purple basil, it's just, an absolute showstopper. It's so, so beautiful. It has a very similar taste to the Italian large leaf, maybe not quite as strong of a flavor, but it's so, so delicious. Um, another kind that I'm growing for the first time this year is the holy basil, which is right over here. This is the holy basil um, right here. And that does have a little bit, a little bit more of a spicy flavor, but not super, super spicy. Um, I think one of the spiciest types of basil and again, it's not really spicy, but it's good for like Asian um, dishes. Uh, let me turn this container around here. And that is Thai basil. So if any of you have grown Thai basil, it's one of my favorite kinds. It is so, so hearty. Um, it lasts through the winter here in California, whereas the um, 
Genovese or the Italian large leaf is a lot more cold sensitive and will die if it gets too cold outside. But the Italian or the um, the type basil I found really does tolerate the cold very well. And I just see saw a comment fly by that I should try the African blue basil. I've never grown that before, so I would really like to try that. I know that's a very popular one as well, so I'll have to grab myself some of that. Um, another one that I'm trying this year too is perf purple ruffled basil. And I think this is just so, so pretty. I mean, look at those leaves. Aren't those beautiful? Um, another one that's really good, some people grow, is lemon basil. I don't have any of that. And another uh, one that I love too is lettuce leaf basil. I don't ha have any of that growing behind me, but that is a very large leaf basil and it's kind of a ruffly type of leaf and it's absolutely delicious. So it's not too late to plant basil. We're gonna talk more um, in just a moment about how easy um, it is to grow basil and why you can have an endless supply. But let me just show you what the seeds look like. These are the Italian large leaf seeds from my herb seed collection. So if you need some basil seeds, grab some over at CaliKimGardenAndHome.com. And at this time of the year, the seeds usually will sprout, I'd say within five days or so, pop them in a container and you are gonna have an endless supply. It's also an extremely easy herb to grow indoors on a windowsill, doesn't need a lot of light, um, and it can grow in the winter time in, in, inside. So you can have yourself a little herb garden on the windowsill. So those are just some uh, basil basics. So now that we've covered the basics about basil, let me uh, head into the chat, answer a couple questions, and then we'll get into the three tips. And also, I would like to hear from you guys too, some of your favorite ways to eat basil because the, the possibilities are endless. There's so many different ways. I'll start off by telling you one of my favorite ways. Um, we love to uh, just slice up fresh tomatoes from the garden, put a little salt and pepper on them, uh, put a little bit of mozzarella, uh, whether it's fresh mozzarella or even string cheese works great, any kind of cheese really, and then just pop a, a basil leaf on top of that. And I'm telling you guys, it is such an amazing garden fresh snack. I could eat that all day long. It's just so incredible. So um, let me hear what your favorite ways are. Cliff is saying tomato basil soup and pesto, absolutely. Those are amazing. Fresh pesto, you guys, is so good. And we were talking in the chat, um, ahead of the live stream how we like to put them over zoodles. And if you've never had zoodles, those are zucchini noodles. So you can spiralize your zucchini or even slice it very, very thin with a knife and then uh, just toss it in pesto. And oh my gosh, garden fresh all the way. It is so good. Um, Nisha, yeah, I love that too. Grilled cheese sandwich with lots of basil and the garden fresh tomatoes in there. In fact, any garden fresh vegetables are amazing. Tam Wilson, oh, I love this. I tried a purple basil mojito this week and it was so, so good. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Jennifer, roasted chicken stuffed with fresh herbs. That sounds really good, you guys. I'm getting hungry. In fact, tonight we're gonna be barbecuing some vegetables from the garden. I just um, am marinating some chicken right now with lemon. Uh, sage and basil, throw in some rosemary, salt and pepper, and you are good to go with a garden fresh meal. It's just so, so easy. Okay, um, Shivani is saying my basil leaves are huge. Yeah, that's one great thing about, especially the Italian large leaf, um, the leaves get so big. If you grow one of the varieties like the lettuce leaf, uh, oh my gosh, they're just so, so pretty. Okay, Billy Bong Thornton, how much sunlight does basil require? Okay, um, like I had, had mentioned a little bit ago, um, I like to give mine about three to four hours of sunlight a day when it's nice and warm out like it is right now. Uh, right now we're experiencing probably 85, maybe 90 degrees. And if, if you leave it outside in 90 degree weather, all day long, it's gonna get kind of burnt. So in the winter time in California, um, I can leave it out um, in full sun all day long. And if I bring this container inside at night in the winter time, I can grow it in a container and just move it in and out um, all, all winter. So it uh, depends on, on where you live. Okay, let me see if there's any questions about basil. Oh, yes, definitely on homemade pizza, Suta. How could I forget that? Uh, oh my gosh, there's so many great ideas here. Brittany, tomato, cucumber, basil, feta cheese, salt, and pepper. That is all you need, really. That is absolutely all you need. And Lisa makes pesto. Lisa Williams, hello, how are you? Making pesto with, and freeze it in ice cube trays. That's a great idea. I like to do that too. You freeze them in the ice cube trays, then you just put all the ice cubes in a plastic freezer bag and you've got it all winter long. It's so much fun to pull that out when it's cold outside and you guys are gonna absolutely love it. Um, it's well worth the effort. 
Okay, let me see if there's any questions before we move on to the first tip here about growing basil. Um, okay, we're going to get to your question, um, Yvonne. In fact, that leads right into our first tip. Yvonne Trevedi is asking, when they flower, should I cut them off? And that is your first tip for today, guys. Here's how you can grow an endless supply of basil is make sure that you prune it. With most herbs, the more you prune them, the more they grow. And basil is absolutely no exception to that. So you wanna prune your basil plants about once a week or so. And let me just show you guys um, how I like to prune mine. Yes, I did bring a pair of scissors out here with me. Glad I didn't forget that. So let me just move my camera a little bit this way so you guys can see. And I do have a video on this. So go back and watch the video. It's called the two minute, what is it called? Two minute basil tip for an endless supply. And I show you um, exactly how to prune your basil. But what you wanna do is prune it below. See how basil leaves grow in pairs like this? There's like two leaves and then two leaves and all the way down they grow in pairs. So what you wanna do is prune them below this first stalk here, just like this. And you can go and do that all over your basil plant and then you can take this inside and eat it, make pesto out of it, whatever you wanna do. Um, but you definitely wanna prune it before it flowers. And I don't know, I don't think I have any that are flowering right now because I have been trying to keep it pretty well pruned. But what you're gonna see is when it starts to flower, you're gonna see a little like uh, multi-leaf, uh, Kind of hard to explain but you're going to see a flower come out from the middle of the top of your uh, basil uh, leaf here and when that starts you're um, you want to clip that before that happens because once it flowers the stalks get really thick the flavor of the leaves change um, so try and get it before it flowers if it does go to flower it's not a big deal because the bees absolutely love the flowers so what you might want to do is let one flower and then keep your other plant pruned and trimmed and then what you're gonna see within probably a week or so, you're gonna see brand new leaves growing out from this pruned um, stem here. So it'll grow in sets of two. So you can go through and prune your whole plant here and then have some nice fresh basil inside to enjoy. And your basil plant is maybe gonna look less than perfect for a week or so, but you know what, that's okay. That's what growing organic vegetables is all about is enjoying them, taking them inside, and then, um, you are gonna have all this beautiful basil to eat. And we're gonna to get to another second tip uh, in just a moment on what you can do with this little stem to, um, to uh, help you grow even, even a more endless supply and lots and lots more basil. So definitely keep your basil pruned. The more you prune it, the more it'll grow. Don't be afraid to prune your basil. Okay, let me just, oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention about pruning is, is that does encourage, not only does it encourage more growth, but it will help your plant be nice and bushy instead of tall and spindly. So if you've ever had a really tall, spindly basil plant that just doesn't ever seem to fill out, don't be afraid to go in and prune it um, pretty heavily, prune it way down, and that will encourage the leaf growth to kind of branch out to the side. So it's a nice, bushy, sturdy plant, and I know it's really hard to do that sometimes, but believe me, you guys, it's the best thing for your plant. It's gonna love it, and then you're gonna have a lot more basil to eat. So let's see. Um, what other questions we have in the chat. And Angela, yeah, my basil's kind of spindly this year. I might have to get some more. Yeah, definitely Angela, um, do the pruning tip. Um, sometimes if it's already gone to flower, you're not gonna get a lot more growth out of it. The stem might be um, really tough. So um, you can plant some more seeds or we'll talk about another tip in just a moment on how you can get more basil. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this because you've already watched a lot of my videos on it. But if you're brand new to gardening, it's gonna be a great, easy tip and you are gonna be so amazed. Um, Sudha, thank you so much for that info. Holy basil tea is very good for you. I'm gonna have to try that. Um, I'm still looking for ways to use holy basil aside from just eating it fresh. So I will definitely have to make some tea from that. That sounds really, really good. Rita, great suggestion. Basil and watermelon are a great combination in water and in a fruit bowl. Okay, that is one of my very favorite things actually, Rita. I know you're a big fan of the flavored water as well. In fact, I've got my, uh, my water right here. I don't have it in one of the glass jars that, that show it off. But in here I have cucumber and basil. You can use it to flavor your water with pretty much you know any fruits or anything like that. And it just makes drinking water so much less boring. So I don't know about you guys, but I get a little bit bored with water sometimes. 
So this flavors it and it just makes it so, so delicious. So let's see what other questions we have. And yeah, great idea, Rod. Mint and watermelon is a great combination in, in your uh, water as well. Slimming for health. Hello, and I believe you mentioned earlier in the chat, if I re recall, that this is your first live stream. So glad you're joining us. So happy that you're here. And uh, you gave a great, or you asked a question, is Genevieve's basil the same as sweet basil? Okay, um, they're, yeah, they're pretty much the same. Genevieve's is sweet basil, Italian large leaf is very similar to Genevieve's. I really don't see much of a difference. There's probably some minor variations, but um, yeah, for all intents and purposes, they're all pretty much the same. Okay, great question here from Pulu B. How big should you let your basil grow before starting to prune? Okay, I would probably let it grow to about, uh, I don't know, six or eight inches or so, but really you can prune it pretty much any time. As soon as it has maybe three or four sets of true leaves. Let's see if I've got one smaller plant in here. Um, here's a smaller plant that's maybe six inches or so. There's several uh, different plants in here. So you could actually go ahead and prune um, this one back right now. And you, you would be pruning off most of the leaves, but that would just encourage um, more growth. So as long as your little basil plant looks fairly healthy um, and has three or four sets of true leaves, three or four sets of basil leaves, you could go ahead and give it a little snip and prune it back. So, okay, you guys, first tip for growing an endless supply of basil is pruning it. All right, second tip here is, hold on just a second, let me flip my page. Second tip to growing lots and lots of, lots and lots of basil is propagating it. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, all that means is that you are growing new plants from an existing plant. So with this little basil plant, what I could do if I didn't want to eat it, or if I just have a lot of... Um, stems here I can go ahead and propagate it and let me find my uh, glass here so all you have to do guys is take it inside stick it in a jar or a glass of water and would you look at that brand new basil roots growing out of an existing cutting that I took I think this one I probably took maybe a week or so ago and look at these roots guys it grows so so fast and every single one of these little stems in here I guess there's just two in here yeah I have another one inside that has three or four um, you can then put in a, a container in soil and it will grow you brand new plants yeah aren't those amazing roots now what I like to do to help the roots um, grow a little bit faster and to be really healthy is I put a drop or two of worm tea in here um, you don't have to you know overdo it with the worm tea you just want a very little bit but it just does absolutely amazing and in fact i'm trying a new product from vermisterra that hopefully will be out next spring that you guys are going to love it's called vitality and it roots like there's no tomorrow and i think i put a drop or two in here and um, i've been using their new product all over my garden i'm testing it out for them and you guys are going to love it it is absolutely amazing so what you want to do is put it in a glass of water and then change the water every couple of days or so um, every every other day is good and then you want to put it in a spot that's not right in direct sunlight Light. I put mine inside on my windowsill and it's a windowsill that doesn't get direct sunlight or on my countertop the sunlight does tend to kind of fry it a little bit when it's starting to get when it's starting to root so you don't want to you know overdo it and then kill your little basil cutting so definitely baby it along change the water and then what you can do after you've got roots like this this one's ready to plant you can pop it in a little container of soil and here I've got one in a tiny little Smart Pots. This is actually the Smart Pots transplanter that I just folded over. I've got soil in here. Just made a little, um, a little hole in the soil with a pencil. Stuck the root in there, and um, it will get, it will become rooted or established in this container probably within about a week. Now you don't want to take this outside and put it in bright sun. Again, I would keep it indoors, keep it in a shaded location until it gets established. And then at that point in time, maybe for a week or two, at that point in time, you can go and plant it outside in your garden, or you can just keep it in this container on your windowsill, or you can plant it in a larger size um, smart pots like this one. So go back again and watch that video. Um, that I mentioned earlier, two minute tip for growing endless supply. It gives you all the details. It's a very short video. You guys are gonna be amazed at how much basil you can grow. Imagine if you trimmed off all these plants I have 
right back behind me and rooted them all, you would have basil for months to come. And in fact, I would highly encourage you to do that because if you're coming to um, the end of your growing season, your warm weather growing season, or when you do come to the end of that, you wanna have a couple of these little containers sitting on your windowsill. I think I grew basil on my windowsill all winter last year, either in the glass jar or in the little containers. And it's just so much fun to have it in the kitchen. You could just snip it, clip it, throw it into recipes, and it's just so fun to have right at your fingertips when it's too cold to grow it outside for easy access. So let me know here in the chat if you guys have done any propagating of basil. Um, I probably will actually eat this one for dinner tonight because I already do have several that are propagated, but you can do it with different varieties of basil as well, with the purple basil, the Thai basil, any of those different things um, you can do with basil. So. Um, my herb seed collection again has two different varieties, the, the uh, Italian large leaf, the purple. It also has parsley, cilantro, and dill, which are great cool weather herbs. So if you need some herb seeds, um, head over to calikimgardenhome.com and pick one up. And don't forget while you're there, you guys, I think on one of the videos we posted this week, I said your assignment was to get your late summer garden planted. So don't forget to um, get your beans planted, a new fresh wave of beans. If you've got six or eight weeks left in your growing season, you have plenty of time. Some of your plants might be succumbing to disease or heat damage, especially with all the heat we've had this summer. So get some fresh plants growing. Beans, squash, cucumbers are all good, quick growing late summer plants. And grab that late summer garden seed collection over my website as well because I've done all the work for you so you don't have to wonder about what seeds to plant. And thank you to those of you who are supporting our online seed shop. Really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's wonderful to see so many people growing your own food. We have the Kelly Kim Smart Pots, which I think our supply right now is very low. Uh, so grab one right away if you want one. The purple Smart Pots like we showed on the bean video on Saturday, and also my book, which we have paired in several seed book bundles so that you can um, have all the directions on how to plant and have seeds to go along with it. So I really appreciate all your support. We are busily filling orders today because it was a very busy weekend. Okay, so let's hear, um, those of you I've seen a few people scroll by that have said they are propagating basil. Let's hear your basil questions. Thank you very much, Bernice, appreciate that. Uh, let's hear your basil questions. Or if you watch the weekend video on how to harvest and grow more beans, let's hear your bean questions as well. Okay, Liz has a question about cucumbers. Hi Liz, how are you? My cucumber plant was doing well, about five feet tall. I got one cuke, no more female flowers. The leaves are yellowing and brown. What did I do wrong? Okay, Liz, um, it might not be anything you did wrong. It could just be the weather. You know, there's lots of things that could happen. Um, disease can attack it. Um, sometimes plants just don't do well for no apparent reason. Um, a couple things you might want to check though. If your temperature are 85 or above or 90 or above. It could just be it's getting too hot. Um, you might want to try covering with some shade cloth. So yellowing leaves can also be a sign of overwatering or underwatering. So um, check all those things, make some adjustments, but definitely I have found that cucumbers do best with um, nice bright morning sun. And if it gets too hot in the afternoon, they will really benefit from some afternoon shade. So grab a piece of shade cloth. But the great thing is that because cucumbers grow so fast, you can get some more seeds planted. And I do have a cucumber seed collection as well. Um, I plant cucumbers probably once a month during the summertime because I like to have a lot of cucumbers. And because of our hot weather, sometimes my cucumbers get a little bit fried. So now's a really good time to plant. I just planted some over like a couple weeks ago. You guys can see by that wooden trellis back there. And I talked about that in my uh, last week's um, This Week in the Garden video. So you can go back if you want to have a little more details on that. Okay, BR, where I live, it's been 100 plus all month. Oh my goodness. Um, I have purple basil and sweet basil. They seem to be doing well in the heat. I prune them weekly and have basil bushes now. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. You have got the sweet spot there for you. And that's the great thing about gardening. There's so many different ways to do it. So, um, you know, find your sweet spot. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try different things. And then once you find something that works for you, you go for it. All right. So great job. 
Okay, uh, question here from Prachi. How many basil plants can you put in a five gallon pot? All right, great question because I've got a couple five gallon smart pots right behind me. And I do like to pack my basil in my pots because I really like the nice full, um, the full look. So in here, I probably have, I wanna say maybe three or four plants. So again, it's one of those things that you can just try and try and you know see what you like to do, um, and they are doing very very well with that many in there, because you, you prune them a lot. So you know they're getting a lot of space, they're getting a lot of airflow. Um, this one right here, I think I probably have. I've got three different kinds of basil, which I really like that that look there. It's got the Italian large leaf, the Thai basil, and then some purple basil right back here, and that's probably again three or four plants. So I would say maybe as a general rule, you know, three to five plants in a five-gallon pot. These small little pots here, I could probably fit one or two plants in. This is a one-gallon transplanter. Um, so yeah, give that a go and then see how that works for you. Okay, let me jump back, give the third tip, and then we're gonna, you know, get back in the chat and answer as many questions as we possibly can before the end of the stream. So um, first tip, we talked about pruning. The second tip, we talked about propagating. Um, and the third tip is feeding. So basil does need a regular feeding, especially if you're growing in a container, but even in a garden bed, you're trimming off your leaves quite often. So um, it definitely does need regular fertilizing in order to keep on producing those leaves. So especially after you trim it, um, I'll give it the Good Dirt Plant Food, which has a 10% nitrogen. So I do like to combine the Good Dirt Plant Food and the Vermisterra worm castings. Um, and I feed my containers with it about once a week. My garden bed basil, I will pretty much trim or fertilize it um, as often as I trim it. Uh, the fertilizers that are higher in nitrogen, nitrogen is what gives your plants that green burst of leafy growth, which basil definitely needs. So definitely you want to fertilize your container plants at least once a week. And your garden plants honestly I would just go ahead and give them a nice feeding um, as soon as you trim them and that way you're gonna be able to grow a lot more basil and have an endless supply and thank you so much Nisha for popping the links in there to good dirt plant food and the vermisteria worm tea I do have a discount code that you can use for those so that you can get a discount on those products I know a lot of you have used those fertilizers those are my favorite ones that I've used for years and what really work for me a lot of people say Kim how do you get your plants to grow your seedlings to grow so nicely your containers to grow so nicely. It's because um, of the fertilizers that I use and the system that I have down that I've used for years. It just really works. So give those a try. Um, you can also just put some compost around the top of your plants. Water them in. A lot of you do make compost. Um, you can make compost in a big space in a small little five gallon container like this. So look up my compost playlist for how to do that. And I show you guys how to fertilize your containers on the video we posted a couple years, a couple years, a couple weeks ago on how to do a container garden mid season boost. So go back and watch that video for all the um, information. And Anya, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Really appreciate you being here today. And it looks like you've got a question. Zucchini is not producing any female flowers after being in the ground for a while. What might be wrong? Okay. I've actually had this problem with my zucchini this year as well, Anya, and you are not doing anything wrong. Sometimes it just happens. As far as I know, there's not a, a way that you can help a plant produce more female flowers. So, you know, as, as we mentioned before, the male flowers always come out first. The female flowers come out two weeks or so later, but some years are just like that. My zucchini has not been super productive this year. Um, it's in kind of a shady spot, so I'm still waiting for those female flowers on my plants too. What you can do is just plant some more, which is exactly what I did over the weekend. I planted some more zucchini seeds in that orange uh, smart pots right there. You guys see that? That's one of their brand new colors coming out next spring. I just popped some seeds in there over the weekend because they grow um, really fast. Um, you're going to have zucchini sprouting, at least we will here where it's nice and warm, within probably a couple of days and then maybe you'll have a better luck with your new batch. So there's still a lot of garden mysteries and sometimes things just don't work out the way that you would hope. Um, but hopefully you will be getting some female flowers very soon. So good luck with that. Okay, yeah, exactly, Bernice. Just get some more planted. Always good to have some backups. Okay. 
Yes, exactly, Cliff. Thank you. Sometimes the plant has its own timing. Give it a little more time. So yeah, plant some more and hopefully you'll have better luck with the next batch there. Okay, let's see if there's a, any more questions here. Um, did I talk all about the feeding? Oh yes, I did talk all about the feeding. So we'll go through, answer as many questions as we can before we move on. And Harvest Enthusiast, hi, how are you doing? I don't remember seeing you on the live stream today. So if it's your first time or the live stream before, it's your first time, welcome. And Harvest Enthusiast says, I saw on someone's YouTube channel, you can encourage female flower growth if you prune off lower leaves like near the stem and a little bit above it. Okay, that's always a great idea, Harvest Enthusiast. I'm not sure whether or not that helps produce female flowers. I haven't myself experienced that, but it is a good idea to prune your zucchini plants. The older leaves are at the bottom and sometimes you'll see yellowing. Sometimes you'll see powdery mildew or disease or drying up. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that anything's wrong with your plant. Just prune off those older leaves to help give the plant a nice good burst of growth so all the energy can go into producing the flowers and brand new fresh leaves. Um, and that's always helpful for your plant. Okay, I do see another super chat here. $4.99, let me scroll back here. Okay, uh, Gaino, hello, welcome. Uh, then thank you so much for the super chat, appreciate it. And Gaino says, I'm in the high desert, mice are nibbling up my seedlings, any tips? Okay, that's always kind of disconcerting when you see the critters getting your plants because you wanna eat them, not the critters. Um, the only solution I've really found for mice and rats is to trap them. Um, and I know some people might not agree with that, but in our garden, if I didn't trap the mice and the rats, uh, my garden would be overrun. So we do try and use uh, a little bit more of a humane trap where you don't have to touch the yucky part at all. Um, and you can look on Amazon for those. I don't remember the name of them, but they're black. Um, but anyway, that's really the only solution that I found. If anyone else has any great solutions, you can also use the little netting bags that you might've seen in my last week's This Week in the Garden video. I have them on my grapevines. That does help protect your plants because they do always tend to eat them as soon as they are ripe, right? So anyway, try those two solutions and hopefully um, it will help. And I saw a question scroll by, I'm not sure, about freezing or preserving basil. And yes, you can freeze it. I've actually done some dehydrating of basil and then you can freeze the dehydrated leaves or just pop them in a jar and then crumble them as you are ready to use them. Um, you can freeze pesto in ice cubes. Um, don't expect to freeze fresh basil leaves and have them turn out nice and crisp and fresh like this. They're usually best um, dried and used in recipes later or if you do freeze them, you can actually freeze them also in ice cubes of water. But then um, they're not gonna be nice and crisp. You can use them in recipes or you can throw them in your water to flavor your water as well. So yeah, Milton, just answer that question there. Can you freeze and save basil? Yes, you can. Can I freeze the leaves for pesto later? Yes, that would probably work, although I've never tried it, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work as well. Okay, um, our animal. What's the latest in Cincinnati summer that I can plant cucumbers? Okay, what you wanna do to, that's probably one of the questions I get asked the most is, is it too late to plant and then fill in the blank? So what you wanna do to figure that out for your area is look at your first frost date of the season. So in Cincinnati, that's possibly in October, I'm not sure. Uh, say it's October 15th. Cucumbers take about I'd say maybe around eight weeks to mature. So you would count backwards from October 15th. Um, and if you've got still eight weeks left before that, then you can go ahead and get some cucumber seeds planted and hopefully get a harvest before the frost hits. Um, also keep in mind though, as we progress towards fall, the days are gonna be getting shorter, less hours of sunlight. Um, the days might be getting cooler so, um, you know, you cross your fingers and you hope that you'll get a harvest, but sometimes things don't always work out. But at this point in the season, I'd say your chances are pretty darn good, unless you have a frost date in early September, which some northern gardeners might. However, that being said, that's for the warm weather vegetables. There are so many vegetables that you can plant in the cooler weather. So the fall garden seed collection is a great one for that. There's 14 
uh, cool weather seeds and that's one of our very most popular seed collections um, right now because people are already starting their cool weather seeds indoors if it's too hot where you live they're not going to grow outdoors right now so start some inside and then in about six weeks say around you know September 1st or whatever you can go ahead and get them planted out in your garden and that way before the frost hits they're going to have time to get established a lot of them are frost tolerant so those are vegetables like broccoli cauliflower kale a lot of your lettuces um, there's 14 varieties in there including kohlrabi too if you've never grown kohlrabi you're going to want to try that one out it's a really fun vegetable to grow cabbage um, and you're going to have so much fun growing those and then if you're just getting light frost into the fall and early winter they're going to continue to grow um, in your garden for a couple of more months so it's a great way to extend your spring garden growing season gardening is not over in the fall you guys even in the winter you can grow indoors so um, you definitely want to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we always do an indoor garden series to help you along with that. Thank you so much, Milton Johnson III, for your $2.99 super chat and the big green thumbs up. I appreciate it. And I always say, Milton, that there's no brown thumbs. There's only green thumbs. I talk about that in my book. So I really do appreciate your support. And thank you so much for being here today. This is so much fun to hang out on Mondays and uh, just hang out with you guys and, and be able to answer all of your questions and hear your tips as well. Okay, here's a question from Brittany. Does it help the basil plant to cut the bottom sets, maybe the first or second of leaves from the bottom, to give it more airflow and give me an extra snack? Um, you can definitely do that, and I, I will do that sometimes. If sometimes I might see if I've watered too much, which yes, I do overwater my plants sometimes. I tend to overlove them, just like you guys do. If I have overwatered, sometimes the leaves down in here or the stem might be getting a little bit brown, and I need to get things dried out a little bit. So yeah, that's perfectly okay to go ahead and cut those bottom sets of leaves give yourself an extra snack and give your basil a little bit of airflow but surprisingly enough the basil is it doesn't need tons and tons of water I found um, it's it is a little bit drought tolerant so but that yeah that would definitely help okay the real society I'm starting a fruit tree this year from seed do you own a fruit tree I don't have any fruit trees but I do grow oh actually I do have fruit trees I forgot I've got some oranges very small orange tree, a lemon, and a lime tree. So um, we've gotten a little bit of fruit off that. But um, yeah, fruit tree from seed, um, good for you. Go for it. It'll be fun to see how that turns out. Sometimes they do take several years to produce, but you have to come back and let us know your results. And Nisha, thank you so much for popping that video in the chat there. Great information, six crops to plant in August for late summer harvest. So don't forget about those late summer harvests. Believe me guys, in six weeks, you're gonna be so glad that you took the time to plant some late, uh, late summer garden seeds right now. So a lot of you um, are already doing that with my late summer garden seed collection. So let me know how things are going and if any of your seeds are germinating yet. Aloha Ann, how are you? She's got a great recipe here for some basil cocktails. Those are always um, super, super yummy. Um, let's see, Ashley, this isn't a garden question. That's okay, Ashley, but I'm making salsa and I was wondering if basil is good to put in the salsa. You know what? Absolutely, give it a try. I don't know that I've ever made salsa with basil. I usually throw some cilantro in there, but everybody's tastes are different. And what I always say is experiment and see what you like. And that's the great thing about cooking from the garden. Keep it simple and then try it, taste it. And if you like it, add some more basil in and then share your recipe with us, okay? All right, do you make pe pesto, funny cat? I absolutely do. When I have a lot of basil growing, I love to make pesto and then uh, throw it in the freezer or throw it on top of chicken, on top of zoodles or anything like that. Okay, let's see, bruschetta is always yummy. Absolutely delicious. What are the best basils for tomato sauce? Okay, with tomato sauce, I tend to stick with uh, the classic um, Italian large leaf basil or the lettuce leaf basil. Um, because that's usually the one I have in the most quantities. I don't believe I've ever made it with the purple basil, um, but we usually have tons and tons of the Italian large leaf. So that's probably my favorite kind for sauces. So let me know here in the chat if you've tried uh, tomato sauce with any other, kind, any other kinds of basil. Um, that would always be a lot of fun. 
Okay, Marissi, boo, any basil recipes? Me and my mom love you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're on here watching. Um, yeah, we've talked about a ton of them already. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else that I really enjoy making with basil. I think that's probably the main thing. I do have a really good spaghetti sauce recipe. We made a video about it several years ago. It's super easy. If you have a lot of garden fresh tomatoes, it's a great one. Um, so go back, just look up spaghetti sauce on my channel and maybe you and your mom um, can make that Marissi because it is a really easy and delicious recipe um, to make with your garden fresh tomatoes and basil. Okay, let's see if there's any more questions here before we sign off for the day. And oh, there's Mac wandering around behind me, which he's really not supposed to be in that area. So I don't know what he's looking for. He likes to look for the lizards. He's probably out there scoping out, scoping out the lizards there. Okay, let's see here. What are the hardiest basils to grow outside? And also, what would you suggest for growing outdoors here in the UK? And this is from Slimming for Health. Okay, in my experience, the hardiest basil to grow outdoors is this one right here, Italian, or no, not Italian large leaf, um, the Thai basil. So that that is here, Mac, he's, he's digging on something in my garden bay, which I don't want him doing. Come here, Mac, come on, buddy. Um, the, the Thai basil for me lasts all winter long. In fact, it is flowered and gone to seed and then I cut it back and it comes right back. So, uh, you know, I know you get a lot colder winters there in the UK, so it might not last you all winter long there. But again, you can grow basil indoors. So, um, in fact, I think I have a video on that in last year's indoor garden series. So go back and check that out. Okay guys, this has been a ton of fun here today. I can tell there is so much interest in growing basil. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you liked all the basil tips. If you missed the beginning of the live stream, you wanna go back and hit the replay. And it, it usually uploads within about a half an hour of the live stream being, being over. I also am putting a digital table of contents in each video description of the replay. So that way you can jump right to the tips that you're interested in if you don't wanna you know, watch the whole entire live stream because a lot of the purpose of the live stream is really interaction um, but the garden content and the garden gems are also in there as well so go back and, and click on those that digital table of contents to catch that and the links that I talk about or the products I talk about and use are usually in the video descriptions as well and also make sure that you're uh, making good use of the playlist so look up herbs for a lot more basil and other herb tips and um, you know always go back and, and check out our recent videos too and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything and hit the thumbs up because that always helps us a lot too. So guys, thanks a lot for taking time out of your Monday. I know there's a lot of other places you could be today and I really appreciate you joining me here today. And we'll look forward to seeing you in videos this week and on the live stream next Monday at noon Pacific time. All right guys, see you later, bye-bye.